Hey guys, what's going on? Adam Snyder here with The Home and Entrepreneur. So I want to answer a question that I've been asked so many times over the course of like a year or maybe a little more than that. And it's uh, why I don't sell on eBay. And you know, why, how do I call myself a reseller but I don't sell on eBay? There's so much opportunity out there for people that sell on eBay. Now there is. And because of that, I, I understand the opportunity but I also understand the, the time commitment that is that goes into running business on eBay. I've done eBay before. It was great. I made a lot of money. Um, you know, it, it, it worked. And it still does. I'm not saying eBay is a bad business. It's just for me personally to house everything locally and to do all the shipments when I sell an item, it became too much. I was selling too many items per day. It was just way too much for me to handle. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want the the overhead with the employees, the space, all that stuff. So what I did is uh, I actually bumped into a lady that does eBay. So she does eBay, but the issue is she doesn't have the time to go out and source items on a daily basis. She goes out only on the weekends and she buys stuff because she, she has a full-time job, she has a family. Um, so she goes out and buys stuff only on the weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, Saturdays and Sundays, that's when everybody else is out there. Because everyone else is out there, the items that she is able to find are actually very limited. So I bumped into this lady. I was scanning books. She was scanning um, like board games or something. And she was doing eBay and I was doing Amazon. So we started talking and she was telling me her whole story. And what we came up with was, why don't I, if I'm already at some of these stores, and I find an item that would be perfect for eBay why don't I pick that up and I will actually sell it to her and she'll just pay me a finder's fee. So what I do, and it's nothing, it's not a huge income, but it's uh, it's fairly substantial. Um, you know, it can easily pay a mortgage or multiple car payments every single month. Um, but what I do is, so let's, let's say, say I find an item for $10. Let's say it's a, I don't know, let's say it's a camera, a camcorder. Um, or, you know, camcorders are, are mainly what I'm selling, camcorders, um, what else, clothing. So, you know, those are two of the bigger items that I, or two of the more um, popular items that I sell to this lady. So, let's say I buy either one of those for $10. So, I buy it for $10, and let's say it's selling for $50 on, on eBay. So, what I do is I don't, I don't get a finder's fee of, you know, X amount of dollars per item. It, it doesn't work that way because... If that was the case, some items that were more expensive that I'm getting a great deal on, um, she's getting the, the better end of the deal and I'm kind of getting shafted. Um, so we made it where I get um, so I get 15% and she gets 85% of the split um, so or of the difference. So if I buy it for $10, sell them for $50, the difference is $40. So uh, at 15%, I'd get... I'd get six dollars, and uh, she and she'd get um, she'd get thirty four dollars, um, or roughly I think that's about what it is. Um, so I'd get the ten dollars I paid for the item, and I get the six dollars that I get from my finder's fee, and then she would uh, sell the item hopefully for fifty dollars, and she would make the the difference. So she would make the um, thirty uh, thirty four dollars. Um, so with that, the thirty four dollars you gotta take out the the cost of the uh, the the eBay the eBay fees PayPal fees and the shipment so in the end she's still making money she's still making a good amount of money for something that I'm actually taking to her um, and she's selling it you know that way so there is a little bit of risk involved um, on her part and she understands this that this is also why she's getting a, a larger cut I'm just getting 15% of the difference so um, with that shirts and clothing stuff like that i don't spend a whole lot of time uh sourcing this stuff because if i spend an hour of my time looking through all these shirts trying to find the the few that could be worth a decent amount of money if i'm spending six dollars and they're selling for 30 you know the the gap there is is actually starting to get a lot smaller so i'm not making as much money and uh you know it's just it's just one of those things so do i sell on ebay no i don't personally sell on ebay do i source for ebay i do Okay, so with that said, there is a huge market out there for Amazon sellers, eBay sellers, Etsy sellers, um, you know, the what the yard sale thing. 
Um, there's so many sites out there that you can make money on, um, so many ways to make money. All you gotta do is figure out how you are going to do it, come up with a plan and a strategy, and then implement that plan. It's very simple. Um, you know, I figured out a way to make eBay work without actually selling the items and shipping them myself. If you can do something like that, great. Find somebody where you can go source or you can do what you're already doing, sell them the product, get your finder's fee, and you're, you're done with it. You can make your money that way. Um, so if you have any questions on this strategy, you can comment below. Let me know what those questions are. If you want a faster response, go follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash homemade entrepreneur. The link will be in the description below as well. Um, make sure you follow my YouTube channel, um, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Now you guys take care.